Winter is the time of year that makes many people want to stay indoors away from the cold and snow. But what can you do as an amateur radio prepper during these dark and dreary months? In this episode, I'll give you some ideas for prepping and radio comms, and I'll get to it right after the intro. Hello and welcome to the podcast. This is K0MRD, your radio prepper, and I'm here with a new podcast and I hope you enjoy it. We're going to be discussing communications for preppers and everybody else that's interested. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Now that winter's in full effect, at least here in the U.S., Amateur radio ops and preppers need to figure out what to do with their time because going outside to play radio or try out your camping gear is not really an option. Unless you're absolutely hardcore, then by all means go for it. If you decided that you're going to get your tech license, now would be a great time to study for it. This is true if you've decided to upgrade your current license grant in order to give you more frequencies to play around on. You could develop your group or family pace plan if you haven't done so already. What a a pace plan is, is a set of redundancies for communication. We get the concept from the military who have used this for years. Pace stands for primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency. What this does is set up the order in which you can try to communicate with your desired receiver. Primary would be your cell phone. Alternate would be a text message. It's much less bandwidth than a phone call. Contingency would be a landline or a satellite phone. And emergency would be your ham radio. I use this as an example. Please set up your own or your group's pace plan according to the consensus of the group. You could also use the winter months to learn CW or Morse code. It's true that CW is no longer a requirement to become licensed for amateur radio. However, it is still a viable option for comms. As it turns out, amateur radio is the largest group of people that still use Morse code. And the reason for this is that some people in the radio community still use CW is because it takes up less bandwidth than voice. CW has been around for about 170 years for good reason. It's simple to use once you become proficient with it, but it takes practice to become proficient. I'm working on this myself, and it's been an interesting ride to say the very least. You could always learn to how to build an antenna. This is not hard at all, especially if you start out with the simplest type of antenna, the dipole. A dipole antenna is made up of wire that is half the maximum wavelength that the antenna is going to generate. It consists of a wire that is split in the middle, and each leg is attached to a coax cable. One side is attached to the center conductor of the cable, and the other is connected to the shield braiding of the coax. There is a formula to follow when building this type of antenna, and that is 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz. Okay? Let's say you want to build a dipole for 10 meter band. The the equation would be 468 divided by 28.350, This would be around the middle of the tech privileges on 10 meter. The entire antenna length would be 16.5 feet. Now divide this in half and you get 8.25 feet per side. The antenna can be put up as a flat top 
an inverted V as well as a sloper. So it's a versatile antenna and it's super easy to build. You can use speaker wire to do it. I've done so. Okay. As a flat top, you would have to put this antenna up at least one half a wavelength above the ground. If this isn't an option, an inverted V configuration is much better suited. It's almost omnidirectional in nature and it takes up a lot less real estate. If you have your, t your tech license, and at least a two meter or dual band radio, you can participate in local nets, thereby getting practice with your radio gear. For those that are not in the know, a net is a scheduled meeting on the air, usually done with a local amateur radio group or an ARIES group. ARIES stands for Amateur Emergency Radio Service. This is a group of amateur radio ops who use their communication equipment and skills during times of crisis by acting as backup communications for served agencies, such as fire, search and rescue, or communications and shelters and the like. Depending on the local ARIES group, there may be training involved in order to register and join. This training is usually free of charge and done in conjunction with FEMA. This is a fantastic way to become proficient with your gear. I speak from experience as I am a member of my local ARIES group. To go along with the above, you could put together a radio go kit, either VHF, UHF, or HF, or both. These are grab and go kits that contain everything you would need if you were called upon to operate outside of your home for a period of time. As a prepper, you would have a bug out bag anyway, but if you add the dual band transceiver, either a handheld or a mobile unit, extra antenna and extra batteries, you would have a VHF, UHF or HF go kit that would serve you for three to seven days, depending on how long you set up your bob for. On the prepping side, now would be a great time to take stock of your preps, checking on your food stores, your water situation, and a great time to check on your defensive capabilities. If there are items that need to be repaired or maintained, this is the best time to do so. If you've not had at least first aid training, the winter months are fantastic for doing so through your local Red Cross. There are online first aid classes offered through the Red Cross, and there is a cost associated with it, and currently that is $37 here in the Des Moines area. Your area may be different, so be, beware. The online classes do not give workplace certification. If that is something that you would desire, I would contact your local Red Cross for more information, or you can always check out www.redcross.org for more information. These are just some options for new radio preppers, as well as those of us who are a bit more seasoned when it comes to radio communications and prepping. I hope this got your interest and that you choose to implement some of these ideas. That's all for today. This is K0MRD, your radio prepper, signing off. 7-3. You have just listened to the K0MRD radio prepper podcast with your host, K0MRD. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and Google Play to catch our next episode. Thanks for taking the time to listen. This is K0MRD, your radio prepper, signing off, 7-3.